brothers wish. The brothers wish, brothers wish. The brothers wish. The brothers. You're now listening to Greg. It's the brothers wish. Good morning. This is uh, the last day of uh, Wispa, Wispa Palooza 2021. Uh, first one in a couple years. Um, and uh, we've got Brian with Baltic Networks to go over a variety of new products that they're handling. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me on, Mike. I um, want to talk about some of the new, uh, new uh, technology that um, we have in the uh, fiber optic space. Um, here we're looking at a couple of the uh, uh, Ilzentech uh, Swift uh, Fusion Splicers. And um, this is their brand new uh, ribbon splicer, all-in-one uh, splicer system. And um, you can splice uh, um, ribbon fiber. It'll do all the, uh, uh, the stripping, cleaving, and everything all in one operation. So it's all integrated on the splicer itself. Um, you don't need a separate cleaver uh, with this unit because it'll, again, do everything kind of all in one unit. So that's it's really new. It's, um, it's a nice product. Um, just started carrying those. Um, this here is a single splicer for a single, uh, a single fiber, and um, uh, it's a four-way splicer, so it'll do a, a core align versus a clad align uh, type operation. So really nice splicer, um, especially if you're going to be splicing to older fiber in your network. So maybe fiber that's been in the ground for 20 years, you got some new fiber, you're pulling a core align machine, will do a, a great job with that type of splicing operation. It, um, uh, I don't remember the model number, but but I have one of that same same brand from you. Yeah. Uh, K4A maybe? KF4A, yeah. And I don't actually, um, I don't have that on the table right this second, but oh. the KF4A is a, a great entry level splicer. It's actually my favorite splicer. And if you're working with all current today, uh, today fiber, meaning uh, stuff that you've bought within the last five or six years, the uh, uh, it's a clad, uh, clad aligned splicer and works very well with that type of technology. It's an all in one splicer again, it does a hot strip, it does a cleave, everything all in the same operation. It's probably the easiest splicer to use uh, in um, today. All right, it uh, so what else do we have here for your fiber lineups? Yeah, moving on down the line here, Mike, um, we've got um, Adtran. Adtran's a, a new uh, a vendor for us this year. This is the, uh, the TA5000 um, access uh, unit. Um, you've got some redundancy. Um, this particular unit, one of the cool things that Adtran can do is the, it'll do XGS PON and regular PON all on the same line card. So you can actually deploy, let's say, a one gig fiber connection today and if you have a business customer along the line of your fiber route that wants something higher speed, 10 gig XGS, you can actually put an XGS uh, ONT on the same network. So again, that card will drive both one gig and 10 gig uh, products at the same time. Uh, and then you can put redundant supervisor cards in there for redundancy. So this is a great platform, entry level platform for um, uh, people getting into uh, uh, fiber. It um, and then just from looking at the at the rack card you have on top of there, so it's a it's a four line card chassis with on the left, and then you got some management and supervisors on the right. Correct. Yeah. So we've got um, this is a basically a two slot uh, chassis. Um, this is a uh, I believe power supply is down here. Okay. You've got uh, your supervisor. These are your uplink cards. This these are uh, ten gig ports on your uplinks. So, um, and then of course console, console access. So this is really carrier grade uh, quality product and um, we're happy to have Antra as part of our solution. This particular ONT, so something interesting about this, I've not verified this myself, but let's say um, you've got a ubiquity, a fiber network. Um, these particular ONTs have been, um, I've been told, will work on Ubiquiti's um, uh, system. Nice. So if you, maybe you wanna, maybe you wanna transition from one vendor to another um, and, and get started with an Adtrad system and maybe you have a Ubiquiti system in place, um, 
you know, you can use both vendors in your network and maybe do a little product mixing and actually have a little flexibility in your in your network that way. So this is a this is a single one gig um, in and out, and it's got a single pots port on it. So uh, very simple uh, ONT product, nice and compact. Yeah, it's a. Um, I have a different vendor, um, <clears throat> different manufacturer, and uh, their little box ONT uh, doesn't have a pots port on it, so that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's what makes this product unique. A lot of these, this size, just uh, gigabit Ethernet out, you know, fiber in, no pots. But this gives you that single telephone line for for pots. So nice. Then yeah. moving on down. So here's some really exciting tech. Um, this is um, a product from Tibet Communications, and we've been selling this now for about six months. And this is a, a full XGS PON OLT on a stick. You can actually deploy an entire GPON network with this being your source of, of um, uh, light source for your fiber network. And this is controlled with some software that uh, you run on um, uh, you. Uh, Ubuntu. It's a uh, Ubuntu uh, software, and then you uh, run the server software that with a web GUI that actually controls the stick through a VLAN interface. So, um, really cool. You can provision ONTs in the software. Um, it works with a lot of third-party ONTs. Currently, right now, we have um, this Azorus ONT that uh, has your 10 gig uh, fiber in. You've got 10 gig uh, copper out as well as gigabit uh, copper out as well. So kind of a convenient um, a device. We also have these that are available with POTS ports and Wi-Fi as well. So again, nice cost solution. These are about a hundred bucks. So hundred dollars for a 10 gig ONT and roughly about $1,500 or so for the OLT uh, device. So it, um and then uh, compared to other manufacturers, that's, that's probably not too different from, from the OLT SFP cost in the first place. Not to mention the whole chassis you got to have on top of it. For right, others. right, right, right. So that now this is, I'll say it's no frills, meaning if you just want to do a data only network and that's all you really care about is data, you know, this might work for you. If you want something with a little bit more manage, uh, management, you know, um, you know, voice, uh, video and all sorts of stuff. Uh, full service access concentrator would be your best bet for that. So, okay. Oh, one last thing I'm gonna point out. This will work in about any device you want. We have this shown here in a micro tick switch. Um, you can put this, you know, directly into a router or whatever. I found that it works best in any sort of 10 gig switch, um, and we've again tested it with a, a micro tick switch, but. Um, you know, we know people that are using this in Juniper products, um, you know, you name it. So it'll, it, it will work with various things. Nice. Uh, moving on down. <clears throat> Our next partner introduction that we have um, at the show here, we're very proud to have Nokia. Um, uh, Nokia makes a fine line of products. Um, here we're actually showing their CBRS. Uh, product gateways, but we also have their uh, uh, GPON solutions as well. So um, this CBRS product, this is a Wi-Fi 5 device. Um, they also have a Wi-Fi 6 device as well. This has your SIM card in the bottom. Um, this works anywhere from about um, a half mile up to a mile in an indoor environment from your tower location and um, provides uh, a gigabit out as well as a, a voice uh, POTS port and of course then your your Wi-Fi. If you need to extend in-home Wi-Fi solutions there's also an available repeater that you can drop around the house and you can just put these things around that will basically repeat off of this device. So really cool solution. We're really excited to have this and uh, um, you know from you know Kia's standpoint you know we're talking about $6,500 a sector for um, you know, a full CBRS deployment solution, so. Six to eight hundred per sector for Nokia CBRS? Yes. That's, 
10% of what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people actually are not, you know, don't realize that you can do that. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, they've, they've, they've actually come down in price to meet the WISP market space. They know that um, this market is very important to them and, um, you know, going to go after the business. So, it, um, Now, I assume that the, that the E-Node Bs, whatnot, that you would have in that solution, while being Nokia, aren't the same ones they're selling to T-Mobile. Like, I assume it's, it's pared down because... They... Um, it, it, so basically, it, believe it or not, it's, it is the same system. It still uses the, 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 the baseband unit um, at the bottom of the tower is the exact same thing that T-Mobile has on their network. So okay. you're getting a lot of the same equipment, you're getting the same chipsets that T-Mobile uses. So no, um, they didn't, it's not like they have a stripped down version of their product. You're getting the full product like carriers are actually using. It's interesting. Yep. All right. Um, we'll, we'll have to talk more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then you got one more thing you want yeah, to show Yeah, I got one more here. thing. Uh, it's a really cool product. Um, we'll bring it over here, Mike. Swing the camera around. <clears throat> um, I'd like to comment that uh, you are always innovative on your booth. Every year is <laughs> something entirely different. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Uh, this year we kind of went tiki themed, so uh, it's definitely a little different for me. Uh, typically uh, in 2019 I kind of went Apple style, so um, this is a quite the uh, 360 change, or 180 I should say. So um, so here we have this cabinet here. I designed this thing. This is our Max Wave outdoor uh, fiber cabinet. Um, it's designed to be mounted, uh, pedestal mounted on the ground. There's a battery cabinet on the bottom. It's fully uh, expandable. You can actually um, choose not to get this battery cabinet if you don't need it. The cabinet will sit on the bottom plinth. There's um, um, pass-through for cabling all the way down through the cabinet, all the way into your ground vault um, as needed. We have um, optional 800 watt air conditioning available for this if you want a closed loop air conditioning system otherwise um, inside here we have a 48 volt fan pack lighting system and uh, and door uh, switches um, that you can set up with uh, thermostats to actually either use it as a backup for your air conditioner or if you don't choose to have the air conditioner you can put a filter in the front of this thing it'll take outside air filter it and run it out through the fans to keep your equipment cool so we're pretty excited to have this. The, uh, the rails also adjust. They have a split rail system. And so you can actually have, let's say maybe a, a fiber box here on the front with all your fiber, recess those rails back. And then the bottom rails are a little bit further out. So maybe some larger networking equipment or switches or things like that that you may have. So fully adjustable. And um, these are in stock and ready, uh, ready to ship, so. It, it, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the list price on one of those? So you're l roughly looking at about $1,500 for the cabinet itself. The battery box is about $800. And the optional air conditioner is about 1000 So That's 20, still pretty good. Yeah. yeah it, um, uh, as I've been building uh, fiber networks now, I guess even going back to just regular you know, server cabinet stuff, that's always been a challenge is in a large environment, you've got space for separate wiring racks and equipment racks. And right, Equipment right. racks never make good wiring racks because right. you shove everything right at the very edge. That split rail, it's kind of nice to be able to do both in the same box conveniently. My goal was to come up with a cabinet that's fairly inexpensive. I know a lot of guys I've seen I've seen the videos on, um, on you know, out there uh, using people use truck boxes at the bottom of their towers for uh, holding equipment. I've even seen Coleman coolers. Um, so, uh, you know, if that's the way you're building your network, um, you know, it works for you, that's great. But I wanted to come up with something that would be cost effective, um, you know, so you didn't have to use those types of things um, in your network, so. It, uh, uh, I'm just noticing here, it's some door contacts. Um, I assume then you carry something that would alarm on them, or is this? So right now the cabinet 
It just It's basically um, a bare wiring. You can hook this up however you would like to, so maybe you have your own network management system that you want to tie these contacts to for alarming. It's really, you know, you basically wire it the way you prefer to see that. That said, um, I am looking at uh, putting a PLC controller solution together that uses a industrial, uh, you know, standard industrial like they use in automation systems for, um, you know, contact closures for reading this sort of stuff, you know, with uh, Modbus TCP or MQTT, which is uh, what everyone's using in the IoT world these days for, for communication between devices. Um, so uh, those are, you know, those are a few things you'll be able to do. But, you know, being able to remotely monitor your cabinet, the environmentals, whether someone's getting into it, you can be able to adjust the temperature on your air conditioning system remotely, in my opinion, is very important. Sure, and then um, just as I'm looking, you know, seeing it a, a different angle now. So we got a grounding block down at the bottom, and you got power distribution up at the top. Maybe. Uh, yeah. So th these are actually your thermostat okay. controls for the for the fans up in the cabinet. Um, you do have a grounding built-in grounding block down here. Um, as far as power distribution goes, it's left up to you to how you actually want to okay. uh, do that. So. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, well, thank you for showing off the new products. And I'm, yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, I'll follow up with my own questions after the video. I'm sure you'll get others as well. All right, thank you. Thank you.